Oh, how you doing, everybody? I uh, sort of uh, got a little behind, wasn't, didn't have time to get an announcement out. I was out doing yard work with my uh, trusty little uh, Seiko, and I unfortunately uh, set it to an hour too early. And as a result, I, I thought I had, well, I got plenty of time, <laughs> but I didn't. So anyhow, uh, here we are. Hi, Geezer. Hi, uh, NS something. How you guys doing? You know, after uh, to morning's, uh, this morning's session, I, I got to thinking is that what would the absolute minimum be? I mean, what would you need in a mechanical watch? Hi, Joseph and Donald and Mr. Gumby. Bill, is that the shirt uh, you do work yard work in? No, I don't. I uh, I, I have an old um, college shirt or a sport shirt of something that was about three uh, sizes too large that I got some years ago when I forgot my pajamas on a trip. <laughs> I've been using it. No, this isn't. Does this look like a yard work uh, thing? <laughs> Me. Hi, Mark. How you doing? Um, anyway, uh, hi, Sean. Oh, anyway, this is what I was thinking is, is that if, if we wanted a movement and we, and we said, all right, what is the absolute minimum in, in the movement that we would need? And so I was thinking about that. Hi, Tennessee. And I was thinking, okay, well, you have the the crown, the stem, and the keyless works, okay? Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. Um, so, all right, so you have that. So you got the, uh, let me see. Uh, mm. right here Let's see if I can all right this will be you know for this is pretty much a minimum movement uh, the only thing about it that adds a little to it is the um, small second at uh, nine o'clock all right so here you have the the crown and the stem uh, this is your winding gear, or they have a crown. It's also called a crown gear, and it, uh, I call it a winding gear for the most part. And here's your barrel right here. All right, so you need, so you need the sort of winding mechanism would be one thing, and we're talking about a uh, uh, a wind up watch. Uh, so that would be. Let me see. I'll count the winding mechanism, which will include the crown, uh, the stem, and the keyless works. Okay, so that's one thing. So we just call it the winding system. And then you need a barrel with a spring on it, your main spring. So that'd be the second thing you'd need. And then you'd need, well, yeah, I guess you'd need a click so that the uh, barrel wouldn't go crazy so you need a click and you need minimum of three wheels uh the first second third wheel for your hours uh, minute and second and then you need the um your escape wheel and you need your pallet fork and let me see and then your uh, balance wheel and then your hairspring uh, and then, of course, you need a, some kind of platform to put it on. But, you know, what I got to thinking, you know, these things in, in some respects are, you know, pretty simple. Uh, if, you know, when you break it down to the parts, the, uh, the tricky part is, I suppose, the number of teeth and, and, and those kinds of relationships that you might have. But um, the reason I was thinking about that uh, earlier today, I was looking at the uh, Georg by uh, uh, Lang and Heim, and the Georg, you can, the whole thing is laid out beautifully for you. I think I got it here. Yeah, I had it here, and then I went through, and I uh, 
uh, put it all together. But when you look at it, here you have your winding system, and here you have your um, your barrel, and as you click. But then you have the thing I like about this is that you have these bridges, these little bridges, and each one is you got a bridge for the uh, first wheel, you got a bridge for the second wheel, the third wheel, uh, then your um, what's it called? Uh, your what is that? That looks like your escapement pivot, I think, or bridge for that. Then you have a butterfly bridge here where you, or you could have a, you might have a, um, a, a balance cock set up. And you got your regulator. You don't need a regulator, but, you know, be a good thing to have. And this particular one has a, a gooseneck to it. So, you know, when you get down to the basics, of it, of, of what you need, you're, it's really not a lot. Now, the regulator, you know, uh, Mark, those, that, that sort of, I, I would probably agree, yeah, you know, if, if you've got one of those ones that we were just looking at there with all the little weights, uh, that's how some, some people regulate it. You really don't need a regulator, so you probably hit them all. Hi, Bruce, how you doing? Howdy from Texas, hi. Uh, let's see. Okay, what's going on? On a separate note, it looks as though the AD in the UK will start opening next week. <laughs> I miss all the good conversations over here. Okay, let's see. Let's go back up here. Uh, okay. <clears throat> After a long weekend, it was rough one last week. Okie doke. All right, on a separate note, there we go. It looks as though the ADs in the UK will start opening up uh, from next week. You know what I'm hoping will open up tomorrow is my uh, watchman. Uh, the guy who's going to, because I've got a, um, a something I don't want to work on. <laughs> so give it to him to work on. Hey, Logan. Um, Okay, um, so where are we going from here? This The Georg is very interesting because the movement is so German and not German at the same time. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. Um, uh, to me, what the Georg does is that I think what every movement should do. Also, uh, to some extent, my uh, caliber six in my Lang and Heim has that trigo uh, trigonal bridge so that you can see all of the, you know, see most of them. But you know what they have on so many of these watches? They just, you know, they have a, oh, like, uh, <laughs> not much to see. But um, one thing I don't like about automatics is that you have that big old um, uh, rotor. You can't see the movement. And about all you get to see is maybe a peak of the uh, of the balance or something. Uh, let me see about this guy. Uh, the one, that, hey, what I do with it? Here it is. Uh, this guy right here, I like a lot because you can really see the whole thing. Um, but there's no, there there isn't. I suppose in certain respect there isn't that much. If you get the gear ratios right, so you know the number of teeth you need uh you need a certain kind of spring now i'm not saying i could make one of those of uh, uh, you know i can barely take one apart and get it back together again let alone make the parts but but i think it's important that if if we could find a minimalist uh movement with a really high quality maybe we could um that would be a really neat thing to have I think, anyway. Hey, Eric, how you doing? Um, see, the explicit, the explicit logic of the movement architecture uh, in the Georg is non-parallel. Okay. Uh, might look at the new Omega, possibly a speedy. <laughs> okay. Um, Hey, Aritone, how you doing? Uh, no three-quarter plate. No, I mean, it's uh, less than a three-quarter plate. 
Yeah, I know, and you're thinking, okay, well, that's a German tradition. Sure it is, but, you know, that's uh, apparently so is a diamond on top of the um, uh, the balance, but not very many of them use it. Hi, Chip Gage, how you doing? Uh, a bit too expensive. Oh, man, no kidding. That Gior is, I don't know, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. Crazy price. Really is expensive. I, You know, this is why I think, would it be cool to have a movement sort of set up like that, except without, you know, just sort of plain vanilla kind of thing? Now, maybe for some reasons that I have no idea about is that it's too expensive to do that. Maybe that's why they have those big um, plates and big bridges so you can't see anything because you can then put all the pivot points on there as opposed to those, let's see, as opposed to the the individual uh, bridges for each, for each one of these. Instead, what you've got, well, see, this is this is the thing I like about uh, the Lang and High. Uh, here you have the same thing. You have these individual little sort of uh, bell-shaped bridges for each one of the, um, uh, the of the wheel train. And except for this one right here, and you end up with a butterfly bridge right there. And then you have it again with in the balance cock. I mean, th this is as a as a way of doing things. If you're if one of the things you're really interested in is the craftsmanship of the watch, and and I'm not talking about you know they did a really nice beveling job and things like that, but you know how the how the whole thing goes together, I think, is a is something that is worth considering. And starting with the minimalist, the very very minimalist. I, does anybody know of a watch that has that? They just got you know they just clean as a whistle except for the bare essentials. Hey, Mark, how are you? Um, the Georg has a lot of classic German finishing touches, but it is also very open uh, without the traditional three-quarter or two-thirds plate. The trigonal is also a great example of that. I know I love it. <laughs> well, see, here's a, my point, all right? Uh, if you're going to, I mean, if you're going to pay a lot for a watch, what are you paying for? Well, uh, to some extent, the the dial, how nice the dial is, and to some extent, you know, some other thing. But the real price, the cost, goes into the quality of the movement, I think. All right? So if you can't see that movement, now, as much as I love my Beauvais and the perfect fitting movement they have in it, you can't see in it. they got these two big plates and, you know, sort of a little peekaboo for the uh, balance but man i'd like to see you know the, the you know to see the whole work i i think understanding that is i mean really trying to understand as much as you can about um about watches and making a watch buying decision i think it's important uh what do you mean with the minimum movement are you asking for a specific movement no uh eric what i'm talking about is uh uh, a sort of a movement with no flourishes, I'll put it that way. Uh, you have the, the the basic elements that we talked about at the beginning. And if you have those and nothing else, um, you know, that would be that would be what I'm talking about, a minimum movement. The thing I always want to see is the mainspring and how much it's wound. It would seem obvious to me to want to know how wound the watch is rather than guessing, uh, like a gasoline gauge. You know, that's a neat point. I, I've seen a lot of um, barrels that have uh, like a sort of a wagon wheel cut out on them. And you can see, you can see them all wound up and unwinding uh, in it. it. I don't know if that's what you mean or not, uh, Forbin, but yeah, that's that would be something. But see, this is what, yeah, I guess that would be, I don't know if that would be a minimum, but since the mainspring is a minimum, being able to see it through sort of like a like a wagon wheel kind of of um, 
of axles or not axles. Yeah, well, um, oh, I can't think of the word for it, uh, but uh, supports on it, and so you can see it. I, I've seen a lot of the open, what they call the open face, uh, I think, uh, kind of thing on that. A minimalist movement would be one with a big, boring three-quarter plate and pillars to offset them. Why, why, uh, take them, why would it need a uh, three-quarter plate? I, a three-quarter plate is, is, you know, it's either for access or for seeing the movement. But uh, I don't know what is, I mean, I, I think what's really boring <laughs> is when you can't see anything. I think Herman uh, Grossman uh, wrote a book on essay on exactly this. Okay. What was the name of it? Hey, Dwayne. Uh, where's Geezer? Who's Zane? I don't know Zane. Uh, probably somebody who I, I think I, that name rings a bell, but I can't quite place it. Um, Zane would call all of my watches junk. Zane and I wouldn't hit it off. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Rich Buddy has a chat with Zane last night. I haven't seen it yet. I'll try to catch it later. Okie doke. Uh, Pascal Koyan makes a movement that does have a big bridge, but it's still very open, very simple. The construction of a simple, mechanically perfect watch by Moritz Grossmann. Oh, yeah, that would be interesting. I'd like to see that, uh, Tiggum. Uh, what I, I'm, I'm still using um, uh, Daniel's book, uh, but the watchmakers, yeah, this one, um, Scott, filling up with little tabs and stuff. This is the one that I use, and most of the guys, most watchmakers I talk to, is this is also the one they use, but it's it's <laughs> it's got a, it's got everything in it. No, I bet most watchmakers uh, uh, would like to have. But, you know, when you go beyond that, uh, I'm sure that a lot of it is based on people like uh, Mertz Grossman. Uh, it is easier to produce than fancy uh, finger bridges. Okay, Tiggum, that I, that I believe. That I think is why. Uh, those little finger bridges, though, give you a, a better view of the process of, of the watch, of the entire watch system. According to the uh, title, they talk uh, Patex. Okay. Uh, he's a high roller with a lot of uh, high-end uh, Patex. Okay, that's good. I'll have him talk to my watchmaker. <laughs> Not the 84-year-old guy. He'd probably... That guy, that guy is, he's, he's, a, he's a trip. Uh, but uh, this other guy that I know. Anyone uh, see the video by Bank and Jack on YT? Uh, he went to JLC Boutique in London to look at a $400,000 master grand tradition. Oh, boy. And knocked over a cup of coffee on a watch. <laughs> Poor guy. He's trying to do the right thing and boom. Hi, Max D. Zane uses gold leaf as toilet paper. All right. Well, that's sort of <laughs> sounds like a rough way. Um, AKV is also very open, easy to see movement design. Yeah, I like him. I interviewed him a few years ago, and he's a, a very nice guy and very approachable. I saw him last year, uh, and we were both doing something else, and I didn't get a chance to talk to him. But I like his style of watchmaking very much. The Healer Collection uh, review was like entering the Queen's Crown Jewel Room. For me, too. <laughs> For, but yeah, that is, uh, boy, he has some wonderful watches there. He really does. He's really a nice guy, too. He's not snobby or any of that. Um, really a good man. I know. I. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I try to be a snob whenever possible, but I can't keep a straight face. <laughs> you know, there are too many too many things that I like that are not snob worthy, and my tail starts wagging and it gives it up. So, but I try. Hey Tim, the AKO six is really cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, his, he's got good taste. He's got and that's just a little piece of it. Um, you know, the uh, well, we were let me see, this was another one from his collection. We've been talking about it so much, I forgot to put it in the um, in the review, and it's one of my favorite watches. Um, that he has, and that's that uh, time here and time there uh, watch that I like so much. Um, boy, have, 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 have any of you got a watch lately? I was looking at um, anyone who's, I saw what I think was a good, uh, a good deal on the, um, the uh, thing that was a good deal on, on a, a Le Ulysse Nardine, um, uh, let's see, where is that one? Ah, here it is, yeah. Uh, this was one that was uh, in his collection, and one of the, um, this one right here, the uh, time here and time elsewhere. And this was his poster. He likes to do the artwork with it. And down here, uh, you barely see it is the name of the watch. And on some of his, there'll be a little subtle thing that'll tell you the, the, um, uh, the movement. The, this is, this is the kind of, of decoration. If you're going to put decoration on a watch, I really like. Let me show you a close up of the, uh, this is that bell shaped, uh, bridge that is being used here as a balance cock. And, um, you know, it's, it's, this, this is on the UWD, uh, 31, 33, 33.1. And, uh, they're all over the place. Here's the one on the, um, escapement. And I really like that because they, they, they do two things. They provide a really good, um, uh, a brace, I guess, as you'd say, to hold the, um, uh, the, uh, the uh, the uh, gear wheels in place, or the gear train in place, the wheels and the gear train in place, and yet they're easy to to remove the gear gear wheels, and if you have to, in any kind of lubrication or other, anything else you want to do with it, and so it's really an interesting thing. It lets you see it very clearly, and then it makes it easier to um, for maintenance on it. Well, I tell you, we got let's work on this, uh, Tim. You got a Timex expedition. Let's work on being snobs and trying not to laugh about it. <laughs> this is what I mean. Imagine somebody who thinks he's hot stuff uh, has got a collection of I don't know, you name it, and then he, he takes a look at Healer's collection. I'd be like, oh. That's, it doesn't. It doesn't help. It's more fun to find someone with a really fun collection that they enjoy, and I, I think Healers is. He's got it both. He's got some watches that are just out of this world, but they're, they're but they're fun watches. I mean, the one with the uh, the Legacy Machine with Zia Hung, I think is his name, something like that. And he 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 had a. He's a sculpture. And so he had this big sculpture, and then he shrinks it down to use it as a power reserve indicator, which I think is a wonderful sense of humor. And it's sort of a funny little guy, too. You can hardly tell it's a person. But if you if you see that, I mean, there, there are things like that that are, are very much fun. Um, you know, snobs might have a hard time enjoying something like that. So uh, let's see. I would take Healer's collection over Archie's plus Zane's collection combined. Yeah, yeah. You know, Healer talks about there's a guy he knows. Uh, he, uh, he told me about it one day. He says, oh, man. He said, you ought to see so-and-so's collection. I forgot what his name was. But he, he was the guy who bought Paul Newman's watch for something like 19 million bucks and, you know, throws it in a box with all of his other ones. I don't know. You know, hey, this is why, you know, there's, if, no matter how good your collection is or how expensive it is, I'll put it that way, there's somebody else that's going to have another one. So why worry about it? I mean, you know, I, I think the best thing we can do is learn how to enjoy, really enjoy watches on many different dimensions. And the more dimensions that 
that we do it on, I think the more fun we're going to have, as opposed to whining about the fact that, you know, <laughs> like I do, how come I can't afford a million dollar watch? If I had a million bucks, I wouldn't buy a million dollar watch with it. I'd go out and buy another toy of some sort. I definitely, I'm, there you go, Roger. I thank God. I, I'm glad one of you is a snob. I mean, we can't have, what kind of group is this if we don't have a, a verified snob? Okay, Rog, Roger's stepping up. I don't know what the rest of you guys are doing. When someone tells me they have a Timex, I tell them I've got a Timex model. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's sort of like someone, well, I got a G-Shock. Well, I got a blue G-Shock. <laughs> That's very cool. Anchor point. Oh, let's see. I'm debating getting a Citizen Eco Drive, but we'll probably save money and get tools to make a lot. So that sounds, that's a lot of fun. Um, I had a I had an Eco Drive at one time, and I, I think I gave it away. Um, I give stuff away probably too much. Uh, you being a snub? I don't think so. Oh, I can try, Mark. I mean, I, I, I aspire to that. Um, Woody Allen once said one uh, something. It was either Woody Allen or Groucho Marx, one of the two. But he said that any club that would accept him, he wouldn't want to belong to it. <laughs> it's sort of fun. Yeah. Here's a, uh, there's a Roger Dubuis uh, watch with a little sculpture. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one called. It's called, what's that called? The um, uh, Excalibur. Isn't that the Excalibur? Isn't that the name of it, uh, Tiggum? Uh, yeah, that's a neat one. Uh, collected Man is putting up a Jorn artwork signed by FP himself on auction with the proceeds going to COVID research. I think it looks... Oh man, I got, I don't have any room on my wall. I've got all of these, I got a box full of um, book covers I, I got to finish up putting up on the wall. I got pictures of my, you know, kids and family and stuff. And then I got all of this other stuff. So, um, and besides, I do forgeries. So I, I, I'll do art forgeries. Hi, Dr. A and B. Uh, you know, I really like Collected Man's thing. I think he, he's got like a $340,000 um, uh, Dufour up for sale. Boy, that would be a watch to have. I think when he, it was in the early 2000s, he, he was taking orders, I think, on the uh, X number of uh, singularities and dualities. And I think they were around 20000 a piece. I know that sounds like, well, that's not, too cheap and it's not but man compared to what you today what they cost is just crazy groucho yeah roger that was must have been it was groucho uh it's not a snub mark it's a snob <laughs> I don't know, a snub, maybe that's what we are, or an apprentice snub is called a snub. Oh, six days left till the end, and it's uh, at uh, 13.5 thousand now. Giza, what's at 13.5 thousand now? Hi, 73 Moff. Oh, hey, Chip Gage, what's up? Hi, Joseph. Uh, what's on your wrist? On my wrist, let me get it all shined up for everyone. This is on my wrist today. Uh, this is a Vesteron Constantin uh, Hysterix American 1921. This is a watch that I like. Um, it The... I like them all. Let's... Oh, the Jorn artwork. Is this by him that he did himself, uh, Geezer, or is this part of his collection? Uh, 
oh, uh, uh, simplicity for 250000 on Chrono 24. Well, that's better than Collected Man. His is 340000 I think. Thanks, Dwayne. Um, yeah, this is, this is a watch. The thing I like about it, it, it is simple, but it's got a twist to it. And that makes it fun. Signed it with a message. I don't know. Um, years ago, there was um, uh, Picasso did something for this guy. I forgot some little favor, and the guy wrote him a check and you know thanked him and so forth and and mailed it to him. And Picasso mail, mailed the check back, and on the back there was a he did a little drawing of a devil. Uh, and, and uh, <laughs> I mean, like the guy's signed check is probably worth a million bucks. Unbelievable that <laughs> he's got this picture of the devil on that he, he did a sketch for him. Really, some amazing stuff. Oh, thanks, Chip. Yeah, you know, it. it here's an example. It, it's simple. It's got a uh, the 4400. This was the first watch to come out with the Vassarone Content in 4400. Uh, in, in terms of, I think it's pretty simple too. That's what I like about it. It's hand wound, uh, single barrel. But see, here is the problem. Okay. The problem is it's all plate. And so I can't really see it. And right down here it's at four hertz um but it's sort of like a oh how would i put it um kind of watch that i don't think about it just it's one that i don't i i know i'm not going to be looking at the movement a lot uh and as as much as i i like looking at movements uh, this isn't one that I would spend much time with because I can't see it as far as the movement. But I do enjoy looking at the dial. It's got a cool dial. And it's fun to wear and it keeps good time. So, you know, it's not every watch can be something that is, uh, you know, holy smoke, look at the uh, movement. Uh, but some of them can. And, and, you know, one of the things I think that um, relatively inexpensive watches can have a really cool looking um, movement in it. Uh, a lot of German companies have taken a 6497 um, or 6498 and made these wonderful uh, watches out of them. And not only the Germans, but uh, some others uh, have too. And so, you know, it's possible to do it with a relatively inexpensive, simple movement. Hi, Orange Shannon, level 11. How you guys doing? I imagine Jay Gadsby would uh, have worn uh, that VC. I think so too. <laughs> Yeah, uh, kind of like uh, Bond had a sub. Yeah, this was uh, the great Gatsby would have had one of these on <laughs> like, and driving a big old car. Um, hey, by the way, uh, today, just in case I uh, didn't know, I was taking a look at uh, I got one of those. You know, you, uh, you probably get them in the mail too. This thing from Shopworn. And Shopworn is one of those places where it's hit and miss. You know, they get in a good batch of stuff, and they got a good price. Well, they had a Memorial Day sale for 20% off. And so there's some really good watches there. I mean, because they're really good discounts because Shopworn, you know, they start with a 51% discount, then knock 20% off of that. And you, you cut, you're getting some pretty good deals. This um, The Ulysse Nardine I mentioned was, was about – uh, the MSRP on it was about ten thousand bucks, and uh, and looking around everywhere else, it was around uh, uh, around four or five thousand right in there, and so I did the math on taking off the twenty percent, and this was like thirty eight hundred dollars, which I thought was a pretty good deal. If you know, if somebody likes the the watch, had a lot of stuff I didn't like about it. Primarily, it's got a black dial, and that's a little difficult for me to deal with. Um, but otherwise, it's really pretty cool watch. It had a nice big, um, one of those big date windows that around uh, sort of cabbie corner from 2 o'clock, uh, actually sort of between 1 and 2 o'clock, and then it had a, um, 
it had what looked like a jumping hour at nine o'clock. And I think that's the uh, that's the home time. And uh, it's it just like I said, it, it was something that uh, I thought, well, you know, somebody's in the market for a, a dual timer. Uh, that might be one that they uh, might want to look at. Somebody else said they, they have one H Moser left, and I, I'll have to check that one out because they have it discounted. And now they have 20% off, and I, I got to see what that one's going for. Uh, do you do individual watch reviews, not collection reviews? Well, see, the, the thing is, is that the, the, on individual watch reviews I've done, have been on, on pretty <laughs> humble watches. I'll put it that way. Most of which are, um, uh, quartz. Uh, I get these things from Amazon. Amazon sends me this stuff to review. And so I do a review on it. And a lot of times I ask to review a um, certain watches. Uh, they're not like, you know, they're, I, don't, I, don't, I think they're all under $500. But then what I do, so I got this collection of watches and then I, I have these contests and then send them out. Like I owe Mark one right now. <laughs> Mark won a little contest we had. And we got another one ending in June for a, a dial contest that uh, we were doing. And so, I owe Mark a watch. And so, you know, I have some, I, so I do individual reviews of those, but I got to tell you, they're, they're not, they're not watch collector watches and the reviews are more like, you know, where you'd wear something like this and the kind of watch it is, you know, they're not, uh, I've done a few, I've done a few vest pocket, uh, individual watch reviews. For example, I did one of the, um, um, streamliner from Moser. So I guess I do. Ooh, okay. Mark, uh, Jay, what, what H Moser is that one? It is that, that's not the uh, perpetual, uh, calendar. Is it Hi, crappy? Well, anyway, guys, listen, um, sorry, my time is up. Uh, in fact, it's over up, but um, let's all practice being snobs, okay? <laughs> Just to see what it's like. And tomorrow we'll try to be the biggest, we'll be really snobby about everything, okay? So think something to be snobby about. But I think the best way to be snobby is take your cheapest watch <laughs> and tell people, you guys, this is the watch. My perpetual regulator, you know, if you don't have one of these, you're sort of not with it <laughs> who plays snobs that'd be fun okay guys take care everybody um stay safe and have fun and hasta mañana <laughs>